Hello, teacher. Hi, how are you? How are you? Yeah, I'm great. Thank good. You. Good, good. How are you, Johnny? Patiently, very well, thank you. How about yourself? I'm good. Nice. I'm good. It's um, supposed to rain today. I hope it does. Yeah, and yeah. a little baby. Baby's good. He kept me up quite a bit last night, so he's finally quiet now. So, <laughs> yeah. So he he woke up at, he woke up at like ten thirty last night and <laughs> just kick 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 kick. And I'm like, stop it, stop, stop, stop. <laughs> so. but, Say that again. I guess you, he's uh, a boy. It's a boy. Yeah, it's a boy. Uh, say it one more time, Johnny. Sorry, I missed it. Are you enjoy the pregnant? Yes, I do. I enjoy being pregnant. Yeah, uh, I do. It's nice. I do. I like it. So, yeah. Jordan, how are you? Well, thank you. How are you? I'm good. And Kristoff. Yeah. Hello. Hello. How's the weather in Poland today? Uh, pretty good. Sunny? No. No? Less uh, temperature, so it's good. Good. Nice. And is it uh, Lean? Or Lena? You might be on mute. Check the top right. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, close that other window where you're getting the echo from. So only have this window open and that, yeah, and that echo will go away. Is it okay? Yep, that's better. Yes. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Good. Excellent. And uh, Omar, how are you? I'm doing great, teacher. I'm doing great. Thank you. What about you? I'm good. And Fernando, how are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. Excellent. And Adolfo. Are you there, Adolfo? Hey. Is your mic working? Okay. I'll come back to you. No worries. So welcome everyone. Welcome to class. Um, my name is Shanae and I am from the United States. Um, I live in California and um, I'm excited to be here with everyone. And today we are going to talk about food. Um, Specifically, um, we're going to look at a uh, food review or a restaurant review from a food critic. And our um, grammar focus today is going to be polite questions. Polite questions. So um, we'll get to that in just a second. But um, let's. First, um, have everyone introduce themselves. So if you could say your name and where you're from. And if you could tell me that, imagine that you're at a dinner party with friends. And how would you ask for a beverage? A beverage is something to drink. So name, where you're from and how you would ask for something to drink at a party. Um, Adolfo, is your mic working? Hello? Hey, you sound like you're far away. I don't know what's happening with my mic. That's OK. I'll listen very closely. <laughs> um, OK, what am I supposed to say? 
Uh, just where you're from, and then if you were at a dinner party with friends, how would you ask for a drink? From Brazil, and I, I have no idea. You don't know oh. if I, how would you ask somebody for something to drink? I don't know. You don't know? All right. Um, Omar, would you like to introduce yourself? Okay, okay, teacher. Uh, my name is Omar Kamal. I'm 24. I'm from Egypt. And what was uh, the question? If you so, were at a party, how, and you were thirsty, how would you ask someone for a drink? Okay, I, maybe I will tell him, may I have, may I have uh, a, a drink? drink? Okay, excellent. Um, Chu? Yes, I'm here. Um, introduce myself. Yeah, right. Yeah, of course. Um, my name is Chu, and I'm a Chinese. If I am at a party with my friend, maybe I will say like this. Um, excuse me, can you uh, bring me a, cup, a glass of uh, beer? Okay, all right, all right. Can you bring me a glass of beer? Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. Good choice of beverage, too. Uh, I for love beer. <laughs> I love beer, too. Only I can't have any right now. <laughs> so, uh, Fernando, what about you? Okay, uh, I'm Fernando. I'm from Mexico City. Uh, well, in that case, I want to ask somebody, um, that party or the friend, uh, I would say, uh, can I get a, a beverage, please? Can I get a beverage, please? Excellent. Very good. Uh, Johnny, how about you? Okay. Hello, everybody. My name is Johnny. I'm from Brazil. I live in Sao Paulo, actually. Um, I don't know. Maybe if I ask some friends, uh, maybe can you get me a bottle of beer? Okay. <laughs> Can you get me a bottle of beer? All right, nice, very good. Uh, Christoph? Hello, my name is Christoph. I'm from Silesia in Poland. And my question, I think we are sitting uh, at the table. And could you please pass me a glass of orange juice? Could you please pass me a glass of orange juice? Excellent, very good. With champagne in it? No, no, I don't mix alcohol. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Um, oh, you should try orange juice and champagne. It's really good. It's called a mimosa. It's delightful. Um, and uh, Lena? Oh, I think you're on mute again, Lean. Click that microphone in the top right corner. Can you hear me now? Yes. Uh, okay, um, my name is Lin and I come from Vietnam. Um, if, I, uh, if I have a party, I think uh, I will ask uh, my friend about uh, which kind of beverage do you like? Okay, what if you, what if you wanted a beverage? What, what would you ask them? Uh, if I like, um, um, uh, can I have a uh, orange juice, please? Can I have an orange juice, please? Perfect. Yeah. Excellent. Good. Very good. And is it Lean or Lena? Uh, you can call me Lean. Lean. Okay. Perfect. Excellent. And Oliver. Hi. I'm hey. Oliver from Chile. Uh, well, normally if I am in a party, I don't have to ask for it. But if I will have to for a very well situation, I mean that perhaps, uh, where is the bill? Is there any bill here? Something like that. Is there any beer here? Nice. All right. Very good. 
I awesome. mean, okay. is that party with your friends? Yeah, yeah, party with your friends, sure, absolutely. Normally, my friend pass me a bottle before I get into the tour. Ah, nice. <laughs> Good friends. <laughs> Good friends. <Like> brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Very good, guys. All right. Well, um, I've got one more question for you before we get into the grammar skill. And so um, kind of something similar since we're in the, the party mode. Um, imagine it is your birthday um, and your friend... Your friend wants to bake you a cake. Um, how would you ask? Um, how would you ask him or her? How would you ask him or her to bake your favorite kind of cake? How would you ask him or her to bake your favorite kind of cake? Adolfo, how would you ask? Let me see. Um, okay. Um, I want a chocolate cake with um, strawberries and peanuts, maybe. <laughs> So you just tell him, I want a chocolate cake with strawberries and peanuts. Yeah. 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 Okay. That would be nice. great. Okay. Excellent. Um, Omar, what about you? How would you ask your friend to bake your favorite kind of cake? Okay. Um, maybe I'll tell him, could you bake uh, for me a chocolate cake? Could you bake for me a chocolate cake? Okay. All right. Two, what would you ask? Uh, I will tell her, if this is my uh, birthday wish, I want this to be a um, fruity, fruity uh, cake, and with my favorite fruit, um, strawberry. Mm, okay, all right. So you'd say, I want a fruity cake, but make sure you make it with strawberries. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Very good. Uh, Fernando? Well, in, the, in that case, I will ask uh, if if he or she uh, can offer me a, a strawberry cake or maybe cheesecake. Ooh, that sounds good. That sounds good. Cheesecake. Yum. Yum, yum. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, <it's> yum. <laughs> yeah, it sounds really good right now. Um, Johnny? Uh, well, I don't know. Maybe can you bake me a... I really love chocolate cake, so can you make me a chocolate cake, please? Can you make me a chocolate cake? So, Johnny, would you have, like, a chocolate cake with chocolate frosting and oh, yeah. chocolate chips and yes. <laughs> chocolate, chocolate, chocolate? Any kind. Any kind, <laughs> <yeah>. in fact. <laughs> nice. Very good. Uh, Christophe, how would you ask? Uh, so, I would ask uh, Chane. Could you please bake me a, a cheesecake? <laughs> Christoph, I would love to bake you a cheesecake <laughs> for your birthday. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Ling? Um, I think I will up them like this. Uh, can you bake a cake with olive oil, please? Can you bake a cake with, what was it? Olive oil. With olive oil? Okay. Yes. Can you make a cake with olive oil? All right. Nice. Less fat than vegetable oil, that's for sure. Um, Oliver? Well, normally it's the uh, people who ask to me if, uh, in order to do a cake because nobody in my family uh, can bake a cake. No? As, as good as me. Ah, all right. Really, yeah. My, my, so how my, do they ask my, you? My, my sister, my daughter, my mom, my girlfriend, they are always asking me for a cake. 
Oh, well, maybe you should make Kristoff's cheesecake then. Well, I don't know how to make a uh, cheesecake. I'm just kidding. I, I don't I either. I, I, could, I could find the recipe. The recipe? The recipe, uh-huh, yeah. Yeah. And if I had to ask to my girlfriend, perhaps I could say, like, uh, Kitty could make me a cake, a little cake. Could you make me a, a little cake? All right, all right. Would it be good? Is your girlfriend a good cook, a good baker? My, well, my, my girlfriend is a good cook, but uh, it's not very good in doing cake or sweet things. Usually the sweet things, I better. I'm the same I'm better, way. Yeah, I'm better in the, in the sweet things. Yeah, I'm the same like, way. I'm a good like cook. Like cake or pancakes yeah. or that thing. Yeah. Yeah, I um, I I I'm I'm not very good at, at making cakes and stuff. I'm much. Now I can make you a really good dinner. Yeah, but, my, my girlfriend. Yeah. Make a really good dinner and a really good lunch and and normally the the food is very tasteful and nice. But if we are talking about Cakes or sweet things, usually I'm better. Then you're the guy to go to. Yeah. Nice. So if you want sweet, you want to talk with me. All right. All right. So note to everyone in class, when it's your birthday, call Oliver to bake you a cake. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I could offer you a discount. Ah, okay. You should do it for free, Oliver. What? Yes. <laughs> but Colingo is not free anymore, so. Ah, he's got to find a way to pay for Colingo. Yeah, so. I had to pay the Colingo class. Yeah, so he's got to gotta charge cake. for the cakes. Got to charge for the cakes. Nice. Good business savvy, Oliver. Very good. So, awesome, guys. So, um, as you can probably tell, there's a reason why I, I opened up class with, with asking you this. And it's because... Um, there's all different ways that you can ask for things um, to be done for you. So, for example, it's per it's really perfectly acceptable if I were to say, um, if I we're gonna get off cakes for a second, <laughs> otherwise I'm gonna get too hungry. But if I said something like, "Will you close the door? Will you close the door?" That's perfectly fine grammatically. It's grammatically correct. But in English, we actually would, if somebody said that, we would consider that a little harsh um, and possibly even a little rude. If, if I were to look at my husband and say, will you close the door? Um, that's, it's, it's looked at as kind of um, a little strong, so to speak, for every day use. So we have different ways to ask more, um, ask our friends, our relatives, our spouses, whoever. Um, we have more polite ways of asking. So what about this? Could you close the window? Mm -hmm. You're no, getting, no. Oh, no, that's Mehmed, sorry. Belayment. Belayment close the door. <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know, Kristoff. I don't know. That that might be a little, little much. Um, we would actually. I heard that in movies, so I am. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. So yeah. this is correct. Be lame and close the door. Um, I don't know. I'd have to hear it in context. I'd have to hear it in the movie itself to tell you if it's right. It sounds kind of weird, to be honest. But. Um, Ali typed, can you please close the door? Um, you could say that. Even more polite, you could say, could you please? Could you please close the door? So what we're going to go over today is all these different ways that we have in English that are polite questions, polite ways of asking um, for what we want. Um, asking people for what we want. So the first thing that you need to remember is that we often use past tense to make questions sound more polite. So for example, um, did you want
did you want cream with your coffee? Um, so I'm ch instead of saying, do you want cream with your coffee, we can make that even more polite simply by changing our verb to the past tense. Okay, did you want some cream with your coffee? Um, this is very common if you are in the service industry. So if you're a waiter or if you are a receptionist at a hotel, you could say something like, um, did you want um, turn down service every night at 9 o'clock? So um, the thing to remember, or one way, one way to make questions sound more polite is to make them past tense. What is turn down service? Gotcha. Say that again, too. I mean, turn down service. What is this? Oh, turn down service? Good question. Um, it's where someone will come into your room and they will turn down your bed or unmake the bed so that you don't have to do it when you when you come back from partying or wherever you are. So it's all, and usually they'll put like little chocolates on your bed and um, stuff it's like similar that. similar to uh, clear the, the room or something like yeah, that. Yeah, room cleaning. Oh, no, like... room cleaning usually happens in the morning. This is always something that will happen at night. Um, a lot of times they'll do it on cruise ships. I've never been on a cruise, but my parents have. And um, they will always come in. While you're doing your thing on the cruise, they'll come in, turn down your bed, put little chocolates on it. Um, sometimes they'll uh, get like a towel and fold it in the shape of a swan or something silly like that. So. Ah, I see. Uh, swan, uh, a paper swan. It's very nice. Mm -hmm, exactly. I'm I'm typing uh, what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah, like could and would. Yeah, you're getting ahead of me, Johnny, but yeah, you're doing good. Uh, so, can and could. You can use can and could, um, either one, to um, be a lamb and, yeah, that's good, Kristoff. Yeah, that's like really over the top, but you can say, you know, you could say something like, would you be a lamb and do this? <laughs> so, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, could and can are both perfectly acceptable, like I said. Could is more polite, is considered more polite than can, but can is okay too. So um, the formula or the sentence formula for this would be something like can So can or could, whichever one you prefer, plus you, the pronoun you, plus a verb. Can somebody give me a sentence doing this? Could you see it again? Uh, so you would, you would use like can or could. So for example, um, yep, could, this is our example. Could you see it again? Oh, could I do <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, exactly. Good job, too. Yeah, could you say it again? Absolutely. Can you think of a way to make this even more polite? I have a different one. Okay. Can I say? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, could you wake wake me up in the early morning? Could you wake me in the early morning? Uh huh. Yeah. Good. Uh, I got one. Um, could you do me a favor and add the uh, uh, request after yeah after this sentence? Maybe it's 
more polite ways. Just uh, could you do something for me? Get in there, Kristoff. Just got it. Please, please. Excuse please. me. Hey, Adela. Hi. Excuse me. Could you repeat me the question? Sorry. Uh huh. So, uh, no, it's a is polite. That your example? You guys are confusing me. <laughs> yeah. So, um, excuse me is another good. Yep, another good way. The word I was thinking of is actually is please. You can add the word please um, either after you. So, could you please? Somebody fill in, fill in the blank. Could you please complete the blank? <laughs> complete the blank. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Could you please? Could you please fill in the blank? Um, so. Could you, could you please pass me a bottle? Could you please pass me a bottle? Oliver's still in party mode over here. Um, <laughs> oh, what so. you say? It's got, it's got to get out. <laughs> So, or you can add please at the end of the sentence. So, can somebody give me a sentence with please at the end? Give me a bottle, could you, please? Could you, could you give me a bottle, please? Uh huh. Uh, but, but I think that you want it at the end of the sentence. It, it sounds weird to me, but. At the end? Just. It's, it's not as common. Honestly, okay, so if you were to say, could you please give me a bottle? Or if you said, could you give me a bottle, please? Yeah. How Americans would normally take that is the first way, could you please give me a bottle? You really are being really, really polite. If you say, um, could you give me a bottle, please? It's almost like you're trying to be polite but you don't really want to be. So yeah, I, feel, I feel the same way. <laughs> yeah, so um, you're right. You're very, very astute, Oliver. Yeah, absolutely. Um, no, you don't normally start a sentence with please in this case. Um, because we're asking questions. These are actually polite questions. If we were talking about polite statements, then yes, Kristoff, then you would, like, please pass the salt and pepper. That's a statement. But we're not talking about statements today. We're talking about questions. So we would either, the most polite is to put please after you. But I heard that uh, in offensive way, like, please, don't tell me that. Mm, that too, yeah. And that's, yeah, and that's, that's again, that's a statement, you know. Um, please don't, um, please don't walk your dog on my lawn or something like that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's a little, it's like, again, it's like you're trying to be polite, but you really don't want to be. <laughs> so, Sarcastic yeah. way. Yeah, um... Borderline, yeah, borderline sarcastic, yeah, absolutely. Um, now, Adela brought up um, the phrase, excuse me. Um, excuse me is usually used with WH questions. Think about this like if you're traveling. Um, excuse me, where is the bus station? Um, excuse me, where is the best Italian restaurant in town? Um, excuse me, um, or let's say you just met somebody. Excuse me, what is your name again? Um, Anybody else? Can you give me an excuse me with a WH sure. question? Excuse me. Uh, excuse me. Uh, excuse me. Excuse oh. <laughs> Everybody, <laughs> all together now. Okay. Um, <laughs> Johnny, we'll start with you. Go ahead, Johnny. 
Okay, uh, excuse me, what is the time, please? Excuse me, what is the time, please? Okay, good, Kristoff. Excuse me, how can I get to the, some famous place? Excuse me, how can I get to some famous place? Okay, uh, Ling? Uh, excuse me, what time is this? Excuse me, what time is it? Uh-huh, good. Good, good. Absolutely. So, you really can add, um, excuse me is most often used with WH questions, but you can, which Adela kind of caught on to earlier, you can add excuse me to really any question to make it more polite. Um, there's one more phrase that makes questions really polite. I think somebody said it earlier, but I'm not sure. Um, it starts with a W. Um, what? Would, yeah, it's a phrase. Would. Would you mind? Yes, good, Oliver, yes. Would you mind, yes. Pass me a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Oliver. Nice guess. If, I, if I ever went to a party with you, I'm not sure there'd be any beer left because I think you'd be drinking it all. So. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. Normally, I just take a couple of drinks in a party. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, so yeah, would you mind? Um, would and and it's usually would you mind plus a verb with ing. Okay. Would you mind with the uh, so. Um, would you mind getting more beer? <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> would you mind? It, I, I'm eight months pregnant. Give me a break, guys. I've got I still got two months to go here. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, um, would you mind? Um, Give me a scotch. <laughs> Giving me a scotch, yeah. Or would you, would you mind baking me a cake? Would you mind um, giving me the time? So would you could, mind could, getting enough food? Good, Fernando. Yeah. Could could you say it again? Would you mind and a little slow to get the sound? Would you mind? With. Would. would. Would, uh-huh. Would you mind? Would you mind? Mm hmm Okay. Would you mind? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Does anybody have any questions about this so far? No? Okay. We're going to look at um, an article briefly on a restaurant in uh, New York. Um, how about May? Um, yes, Chu, you can use May like, but that's usually like, may I have a drink? May I, and I don't know. Americans are really bad about using may. It's usually can. So, may I have the salt and pepper? So, but yeah. Mm -hmm. So here, let me give you guys the uh, link to this article. And I'm going to, we're not going to, it's a long article, so we're not going to go over the whole entire thing. But we are going to, I'm going to read you parts of it. And we're going to go over a little bit. You can see that this restaurant really didn't get a very good review. It only got two stars. Yikes. And this is in New York City. And it's about um, this chef named Wiley Dufresne. And he's a very... Teacher? Yes. 
Could you make bigger, please? Yes. Tell me when. Oh, that's okay. Is that good? So, okay. A little bit, yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, um, Wiley Dufresne um, is probably called a mad scientist more often than any other American chef, but nobody ever says what kind of mad scientist he is. The obvious answer is that he's a mad chemist, weighing out colloids and starches and sugars by the gram. That's what has helped him win international acclaim at WD40, or WD50, sorry. Um, that is a, another restaurant that he has. And so far, that's how, people, that's how people have seen the menu at Alder, his new, more casual place in the East Village, where you can build a meal out of three to five smallish plates or just check into the bar with a slightly twisted cheddar spread and a fully twisted Mai Tai. Okay, um, it goes into talking about this really, I don't know, this sounds really disgusting to me, um, but uh, they talk about that he might be a mad uh, zoologist with an enzyme known in the trade as meat glue. I don't know, I don't know about you, but that just doesn't sound right to me. Um, he creates such a natural species as the uh, cylindrical quail. This boneless, peakless, pink column of poultry doesn't cluck or walk. Its sole purpose is to be deep fried in panko in Alder's kitchen and stretched out across ripe bananas and broccoli leaves in a sweet and easygoing curry. I like curry as much as the next person, but this just sounds really strange. Um, or a mad marine biologist. Um, Alder's excellent fish and chips is made from spiny dogfish, which looks like a small, dim-witted shark who's lost his dentures. So basically, the idea is this guy makes really weird food, and he's kind of weird-looking himself. That's him on the left. <laughs> so I don't know why he has, you know, he's missing a bunch of hair right here. I don't know why he has it parted that way. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, so they they call him a wizard. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess he could pass for a wizard. But, but I, I, I don't know if I understand him right, but if this man is creating something like meat, uh -huh. but it's like an artificial meat. Um, it's not that it's artificial. It's that he... Um, Christoph mentioned molecular gastronomy. He is able to manipulate meat in a way that makes it, it's supposed to make it new and exciting and fun and that sort of thing. But, but he's still uh, using animal. Yeah, know, he's still using the animals. Meat. Yes. But, but I think uh, some chem chem chemistry, uh, chemical materials like meat glue. I know I knew this since because of the news uh, in, in China. Because uh, okay. yeah, this kind of material can stick the uh, slices of chicken or any meat together like a gotcha. piece of uh, yeah much more be bigger and this used in China and the people are discussing uh, okay. with, uh, with this uh, whether it is uh, Good because you know, the meats they stick to, they stick to together. They actually the rest of the meat used to, after the use. Mm. Okay, so it's it's like a chemical that holds the meat together. Is what you're saying? Yes. Interesting. Like you have okay. you have chicken breasts, and uh, after you use this kind of uh, meat, you uh, the rest of is it usually be uh, thrown away, but use meat glue, you can pull them together as, gotcha. a, as a whole piece of chicken. Yeah, see, that sounds weird to me. <laughs> you need to, right? Yeah. I love this. Yeah, I don't know about that. I don't know. I don't know. So, um, he, uh, he talks about that, um, the, the article goes on to talk about a little bit about Mr. Dufresne's background, um, who he's met, um, 
who his inspirations are basically as chefs and um, it goes on to talk more about some of the food and um, they serve foie gras there which is very controversial in the US and um, he also goes on to talk about um, his other restaurant that uh, according to this article the guy who's writing this article seems to enjoy his this other restaurant WD 50 um, more than he en enjoys this um, new restaurant but he has an issue with the restaurant because it's very very noisy um, which is, I think, partially why he gave this restaurant such a bad review. Um, so he says, the angle of those slats looks as if, as if they would blunt noise. This is an illusion. The conversational racket is ferocious when Alder is full, which it almost always is these days. If you are losing both hearing and eyesight, the restaurant will be a double ordeal because the type on the menu is pill bottle tiny. So if you're trying to read the menu and you can't see very well, you know, you need your glasses. Buy reading glasses if you need to because Alder, even with a few misfires, is an exciting restaurant. Now that WD50 serves only tasting menus, it belongs as much to the global, global foodie circuit as it does to the Lower East Side. Alder feels the way WD50 used to. Some customers are there to write blog posts on the food, and some are there just to talk or flirt or drink. One Mai Tai, too many. Or look around once in a while and say, wow, that was cool. So he gave him two stars, and this is kind of the, the deal. So the atmosphere is casual with smart, low-key design and a bar up front design for eating. Uh, the service is friendly and well-versed in the menu's trickier passages. Sound level what? <laughs> so obviously that was a big issue for this food critic. He did not like that it's hard to hear in a restaurant. Um, and he also recommends some, some food and drinks. So um, if you ever get to New York, it might be an exciting place for you to go. So um, that is Alder. I think this place is suitable for adventure. For adventure? Okay. All right. Okay. So I have some questions for you. Um, so regarding this, um, if you were a food critic and didn't like what was served to you, how would you ask for something else? Remember our polite question discussion. Would you mind to bring me a different dish? Would you mind bringing me a different dish? Good, Oliver. Please? Please. <laughs> <laughs> Please and thank you, like Barney say. Nice, nice. Anybody else? Can you right. think of... The question is we want to exchange mm -hmm. a new dish or we just... Uh, Order an additional course. Say that again, too. I mean, if we just uh, exchange the dish for free, or we just uh, order another um, course. Well, normally when you use a polite way. When you're a, when you're a food critic, normally your meal is being paid for, so it's up to you. But. If you were at a restaurant, even if you weren't a food critic, if you were at a restaurant and decided that you didn't like the dish that was being served, how would you ask for something else? Um, excuse me, could you ask? It, oh, could I ask you other kinds of food, please? Okay, excuse me. Could I have a different kind of food, have, please? Okay. Uh huh. Yeah. Can I have a different kind of food, please? Good. Excuse me, sir. Uh, would you mind if I change my main course? Good, yeah. Would you mind if I changed my main course? Good. Good. 
Maybe just after the order, but not the course already served to you. So you want to make a change. Yeah, you, you've already been served your meal, but you don't like it, so you want something else. Okay. Well, well you mind to take out that crab of my face? You say that again? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay. It's polite, but it's rude anyway. It's, it's, yeah. <laughs> what would... Okay, is anybody here a vegetarian? Yes. I don't like vegetarian. Who's a vegetarian? I said I don't like vegetarian. You don't like vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I like vegetarian. vegetarian. I, I, like, well, I like vegetarian, but I, at the end of the day, I need the meat anyway. I agree. All right, so Christoph, this question's for you. Let's pretend you're a vegetarian since you like them so much. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say if you were a vegetarian and a friend gave you a dish with meat? Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, sorry, but I, I don't used to it. That's animals. Okay. All right. Can no, you? So, so if you so if you said sorry, but I don't eat animals, how could you follow that up with a polite question, Oliver? Could you give me? Have you a vegetarian food, please? Could you give me vegetarian food, please? Nobody wants to be nice to the vegetarians. No, no, I, I'm kidding. Bring the back. Bring the beef. No, bring, bring, bring the back. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Very good. Actually, I feel a little sad by the animal, but I can't avoid to eat meat. I don't. I don't feel bad at all. <laughs> I, mean, I, I think I, I think sometimes I really think that it's very cruel that we are doing with the animals, with the sheep, with the cows. I think it just depends on how they're treated. You know, I mean, they were they were put here for us to eat. Well, so. that is the, that is the same that the in the old time the black people say from the, I mean the the white people say from the black people. And and before that, it was the same that the, the white people, or, the black people were here for us to eat. Well, they yeah. say that they say that he was put in here in order to be serving like a slave in the time of slavery. Oh no, I don't. And, I just, and, and I before that, that. It was the same with the England and Spanish with the native of America. Mm, I don't know. I don't. I, I don't think you can compare that to people because we've eaten. Yeah, it's not the same, but thousands it, of there years. are some similar in there. So, I don't know. I I don't. I think I have a problem with um, some of the slaughterhouses and how animals are treated, but I don't have a problem eating them. So, hmm. I think it's perfectly fine. Hi, Fabiana. Hello, Shanae. How Hi, are everybody. you? I ate meat today. You ate meat today. I'm gonna eat meat after this. <laughs> Me. Um, Adolfo, is your mic working? Yeah. Yeah. Adolfo, how would you tell your waiter your dinner was cold? Um. Actually, I don't know how to say that in English. <laughs> think, think back to the, the different phrases for the polite questions. What do you think might work here? Um, I don't know if it's right, but could you please make it hotter? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, we would a better way would be to say, "Could you please reheat, reheat?" Yeah, that's reheat what my food. Yeah, yeah, reheat my food. Uh huh. Could you please? Yeah, or two. Could you warm my dish for a second, please? Mm hmm. My dinner is cold. Uh, can you warm it, please, Ali? Good, good, good. Um, 
one more question, and this is for um, anyone and everyone. Um, let's say you are really tired after making a nice dinner um, for your family or your friends or your husband or your wife or whoever, but you made a really good dinner and you really don't want to do the dishes. <laughs> How would you ask your spouse, your friends, your kids, or whoever you made dinner for, how would you ask them to do the dishes for you? Could you do the dishes, please? Could you do the dishes, please? Now that you are filled with all the food that I cook for you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Fabiana, what would you say? Uh, could some uh, could somebody uh, do the dishes for me, please? Could somebody do the dishes for me, please? Yeah, that's good. Uh huh. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, those are all good. Anybody else have an idea? If you want to live another day, better do you do the dish. <laughs> <laughs> that's not very polite. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fun. Uh. Sweetheart, love of my life, could you wash the dishes, please? Allie, I think you get the you you win. Allie gets the gets the gold star for that one. That's perfect. I think That's it's perfect. too sweet. That's too sweet. I don't know. You're the one who said the you brought up the lamb thing, Christoph. Christoph, could you would you be a lamb and do the dishes for me, please? <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Oh, Johnny already. Johnny all of a sudden came down with the flu after eating. I have flu. Could you wash the dishes? <laughs> it's a good excuse. <laughs> oh, nice. Do the dishes, or you won't eat my food ever again. Nice, Adolfo. God, you guys are mean. I don't know if I'm ever having you over for dinner. It's easy to be mean. It's yeah. Sometimes it's funny. It's funny. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Like do the ditch, you. Be Back. <laughs> All right. Um, the poetry. With the time that we have left, um, I'm going to see. Uh, I want to see how well you guys can make polite questions because you guys are obviously really good at being rude. So <laughs> I want to see how well how well you guys do at being polite. So I'm going to. Uh, we're going to do this a couple different ways. Um, I'm going to have um, Adolfo and a, I'm going to have a couple of you make a polite request with either can or could. So I'm going to give you a situation and um, you're going to ask me a question basically. So for example, Adolfo, let's say that we're neighbors and you think that I got your mail in my mailbox. What could you ask me? Oh, sorry, could you say it again? Oh, could this you is for, say it again. Please? This is for Adolfo. This is for Adolfo. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, for Adolfo. So Adolfo and I are neighbors, and I Adolfo thinks that his mail got in my mailbox. What could you ask me, Adolfo? Using can or could? Um, could you please check if my mayor is in your mailbox? Yeah, perfect. Yeah, can you please, or could you please, was it can or could? It doesn't really matter, but can you please check to see if my mail is in your mailbox? Good, really good. Um, two, yes. same thing, well, not the same thing, um, inst we're, um, we're neighbors, and I'm being really annoying because my TV is on so loud you can hear it next door. What could you ask me? Would you mind turning down your TV uh, voice a little bit too? Uh, lower. Uh huh. Okay. Would you mind turning down your TV a little bit lower? Good. Good. Excellent. 
Um, Fabiana, have you been watching outside, Fabiana? You have, right? For a little time. For okay, all right. So, do you think that you could um, make up a question, a W H question? So, who, what, where, when, or why? With, excuse me. Can you give me it, an example, please? Um, so we, we talked earlier about how we will, to make, instead of just saying, where is the bus station, we'll add it. Can you tell me where the bus station is, please? Um, well, we were talking, we talked earlier about that, if, that a lot of times with WH questions, we'll add excuse me to it. So excuse me, could you, you know, could you please tell me where the bus, something like that. Can you make up a question using that? With um, good. Um, it, as long as it has excuse me and a who, what, where, when, or why question. Um, um, would you, uh, excuse me, would you tell me where the bus station is? Yeah, perfect. Uh-huh, that works. Yeah, good. Uh, it, good. it would be more polite if you say, instead, like Adidas asking, like, where is the bus station? You say, do you know where the bus station is? Is? Mm, it wouldn't necessarily be more polite. Um, I, I, I ask that for at least in my country, when you are, want to be very polite, you used to turn your ordering in a question like information question. I mean, do you know? Do you have? We, it, if you want to make it the most polite in, um, in English, you would actually change it to past tense. So, and add excuse me, especially if you're talking to like a stranger. If you're, if you're asking a question to a stranger, the most polite thing to do in English is to say excuse me first. Um, excuse me, did you happen to know where the bus station is? So um, I, instead of saying do, I would say did. Excuse did. me, did you know? Yeah. So um, we would actually change it to past tense and add excuse me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry to trouble you. That works too, Kristoff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, Fernando, can you give me a WH question with excuse me? So like who, what, where, when, or why? Excuse me. Uh, where's the nearest uh, post office? Excuse me, where's the nearest post office? Good, yeah, excellent, very good, very good. Um, Johnny. Yes. Can you give me a would you mind question? Um, what's my come to my party and uh, start living. Would you mind coming to my party on Saturday? Good, good. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> good job, Johnny. A plus. Good job, Johnny. Um, Oliver, can you give me a would you mind question? Uh, yeah, but before that, I want to ask, uh, I heard that sometimes you can use the word crash. And in the sense that you are inviting something, somebody into something. I mean, you can use the word what? Crash. Cash. Crash. Like Cross. money. Cash. No, no. C crash on somebody. Crash. Yeah, I heard in a song by Motley Crue. They say that I can crash on it. Oh, that's when you're not invited someplace. If you crash a party, you weren't invited to that party. Yeah, but but I I heard in the different sense. Like my friends are in LA and they say I can crash on it if I want. Ah, uh, or you can crash on the couch. It means you can like sleep someplace. Ah, 
Yeah, two different things. Okay, okay give me so, a would you mind question. So, yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, uh, would you mind to learn, uh, teach me some of English? Good, would you mind teaching me some English? Please. Mm -hmm. Please. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Excellent. Yeah, very good. Awesome job, guys. Um, I will yeah, be back. I think that you are an excellent teacher. Thank you. <laughs> so, I'll be back in two hours. I think I'm doing art and literature, but I don't remember what the grammar skill is. Um, hold on, I'll tell you. Um, so, you know. So, in a couple of hours, we're going to do something with art and literature. Probably with literature, because Tuesday we did art. Um, oh, uh, modals of deduction. Uh, uh, last question, can I? Uh-huh, of course. What does it mean, modly crew? What does it mean? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no clue. <laughs> it's just the I, band. I, 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 I know Skinny Bob. Yeah, I have no idea. It's just the yeah. band name. So, yeah, but two two hours um, for it. It seems that you are mute. Okay, two hours for art and lit and modals of deduction. So I'll see you guys then, hopefully. So good job to everyone. I'll see you later. So thank you. Very thank much. you guys. Bye guys. Bye.